Off camera, I've done a little bit of a cleanup to the code here and to make it easier to follow along with this series of videos, I've actually created another GitHub repository called 12MA test all of mathematics. This is this maths test that we're building together in these videos. I'll put a link down to the uh, repository in the description of this video. So my goal in this video is to do some simple calculus, derivatives and integrals. And so we'll come into this question. Let's say that for whatever reason we want to keep plugging away in this particular question and we don't want to start a new one. So I'm not in a part or a subpart or anything like that at the moment. I just want to put a little bit more extra information for the student so that they can do the next parts of this question. So I've put this information here and I'm just going to click compile. And you can see we've got that bit of information here. Now, we've got sine x in here, and you may have noticed just a moment ago that I've actually got a forward slash in front. And if we don't have that forward slash, it's going to typeset incorrectly. It's going to look like s times i times m, which obviously is not what we want. Not that anyone would confuse that, would they? But it's still good typesetting practice to make sure that you've got your up, upright type for your operators. Okay. Uh, one thing I don't like about this is that the level of indentation seems too too much for me. So it's lined up with the subparts here, uh, this new bit of information. So we can fix that up by capturing in curly brackets an up level. And that's just going to say, hey, put this back a little bit. Okay. Okay, so it's time now to put in our part which has a couple of subparts. Let's say that both subparts are worth two two marks or two points. Okay, so first one, let's do a derivative. Uh, let's find <clears throat> the derivative with respect to x of f of x. So forward slash diff, two sets of curly brackets. In the set of second set of curly brackets, we're going to put an x, and we want to capture f of x. It's, I don't know if you would want to put uh, brackets there or not. That's just a personal preference sort of thing. And the reason why I've said I would like to just have something in the second set of curly brackets is because I want an x downstairs, but I don't want anything upstairs. So for example, if this had been a y there, then it, we would have got dy dx right there. Okay, which wasn't really what we wanted. Although, having said that, if this was y equals sine x, then it does make a bit more sense. So let's stay with that. So that's our first one, find dy dx. And the second one, let's see how we put in integrals. So let's evaluate the integral from zero, sorry, from zero. So I'm putting that downstairs with a uh, underscore two one. So I'm putting that upstairs with a caret symbol. The integral from zero to one of g of x dx. So instead of just writing dx, um, like that, I don't like doing it that way because then all of a sudden it looks like d is a variable. Whereas, in my opinion, isn't that an operator? So I've got a, a macro in here that will allow us to typeset that correctly. So forward slash d i f for our differentials. Okay, then we get a nice upright Roman D to go with the upright Roman Ds in our dy dx just here. Now this integral symbol here is a little bit small. That's because we're in uh, inline maths mode here between dollar, dollar symbols. So if we're in inline maths mode, we can still use displayed maths. And what we're going to do is go forward slash display style and capture all of the stuff that we want to be displayed. Displayed just means larger version. 
Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And now we've got to actually go and answer these questions. So I don't want to type all of this stuff out again. So I'm just going to copy that. And I am going to copy that. So with this one here, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a simple one-liner. So I don't need an online environment. So forward slash open square brackets, forward slash close square brackets to just go into displayed maths mode. And um, dy dx equals, just to get some practice with this, the derivative with respect to x of sine x which is cosine x okay again really really good idea to be compiling on a regular basis to just see if you're getting things in the right spot and making sure that you're uh, not making any errors and here I can't see what I've done because I need to go to main.tex and toggle the answers back on Okay, uh, so yeah, the deriv derivative of y with respect to x is the derivative with respect to x of sine x, which is cosine x. Okay, that one looks not too bad. Uh, and we had one inch. That's probably about right. This one here, perhaps you need two inches to do this one. Um, so the integral from zero to one. Okay, so that little bit of code there is going to be copied and pasted. We're going to use our align environment. Remember, we need an ampersand to say, hey, this is where we want to line stuff up. And remember, we need a double forward slash to go onto the next line. And we need to use this very, very carefully. We use, use this sparingly. In our body copy, we never want to see that. We just want to insert in environments from time to time. Okay, so g of x was x cubed plus 2x, I think. Have a Am I getting that right? X cubed plus 2x, yeah. Okay, so now we just have an ampersand equals there. And we don't need anything on the left-hand side, do we? So we're just going to simply line up all our equal symbols and kind of work this thing out. Now, it's time to actually evaluate this. So I've got a macro. You can do this by hand, of course. You can hand type it because it's the type of thing that you're going to be using all the time. I've got this thing called a macro in this file, one hyphen preamble.sty. Um, so forward slash capital E V A L and then three sets of curly brackets. In the second and third sets, those are the limits of integration. So we're integrating from zero to one. So I'll show you what that looks like so far. Okay, from zero to one. And obviously we need to stuff something in there and that's going to be the indefinite integral. So the indefinite integral is going to be a quarter of x to the fourth plus x squared, isn't it? So forward slash frac for our fractions and top and bottom, it's going to be one and four. x to the fourth plus x squared. Okay, like that. And now we simply need to plug in our numbers. And in this case, it's going to be not too bad, is it? Because the ones are going to be easy to work with, as are the zeros. So it's a quarter plus one, which is five quarters. And then we're subtracting zero. Okay, so that's how you put in simple calculus, derivatives, integrals, that type of thing. And um, we will continue on in the next video looking at something else.